So there's mainly three authorities in life and I'm just gonna show one from the King David's life, the parental authority. Parental authority are those people in your life that teach, treat you like a kid. David had his father, his father was Jesse and Jesse treated him like a kid. Samuel came into the house to look for a king and Jesse calls all of his sons and doesn't bring David to the, to the table. I mean imagine Pope Francis coming to your house and your parents send you to clean the basement because you're a kid. You don't need to be here. I mean that's kind of offensive. David gets anointed as a king and you would think they, his dad will graduate him says hey son you don't need to do the shepherding. Let, let's hang out in the table. His dad says well since the party is over David go back to the sheep. It's like dad didn't you hear I'm a king? No that doesn't matter to me. You go back to the sheep. David goes works as a musician for Saul and Saul gives him some vacation time and guess what David goes back to do working with the sheep. His dad didn't care he's gonna be a king. He only cared about one thing. You're my kid. I brought you into this world and you're gonna take care of my sheep. See and we all don't like that sometimes as kids but we all need that to develop a character for the destiny God has for us. See all of us we like the authority in our life, the second one, the prophetic authority that sees a king in us. But the problem with prophetic authority is that they cannot be your parents. Prophetic authority is the authority like a pastor or like a mentor or sometimes somebody on TV in the book in the podcast who speaks life into you, who tells you who you are, tells you you are righteous. They don't care about the chores you do. They don't care about your finances. They don't care what you do with your girlfriend. They, they only care about one thing, your destiny. And we're like man I love that. I want that to be my dad. Well Samuel can't be your dad. David had a Samuel but Samuel was not his friend and it wasn't his father. You need to have a parent who only cares about one thing. Is your room clean? How are your grades? When are you coming home? Why didn't you cut the grass? That's the only thing they care about. Not about your Bible reading plan, not about anything else. Are you there at morning prayer? And they care about these kind of a minion things that you're like, you know what? I don't like that. And then you have your home group leader who speaks life, who speaks encouragement into you. You're like, man, why didn't God make my home group leader and my dad into one person? God puts your parent to develop your character, but he gives you a Samuel in life to develop your destiny. And you need the character to sustain the destiny. Can somebody say amen? Samuel is the one who sees a king inside of you. But the problem with Samuel, so if you go, go back to the number one. Parental authority. The key to parental authority is to remember. God will not bless you based on you having good parents. God will bless you based on you having good relationship with the parents you have. Nowhere in the Bible God said he will bless you because you had good parents. Actually people who had good parents usually were messed up kids. You see in the Bible all over kids who had parents who didn't even believe in them, who were harsh on them but because they had a good attitude God blessed them. Don't think having good parents will give you a blessing. It's having a good relationship with the parents God gave you is what blesses your life. Your parents might not be believers. Your parents may not even support you but your attitude, how you treat them, how you speak to them, how you deal with them makes a big difference. If your parents make mistake and you attack them or I heard sometimes kids gather together actually physically beat their parents. Complete stupidity. Not realizing God is not going to look at how your parents are doing to bless you. He will look at how you're responding to your parents to determine whether he will bless you or not. The prophetic authority, the key here is this. The goal is not to stay close to Samuel. The goal is to stay close to the course Samuel lays for your life. David only meets with Samuel twice. Once when he anoints him and the other time when David runs from Saul. You don't see David and Samuel being buddies. You don't see them going for coffee every weekend. You don't see Samuel asking him for his sins every, every single month. You see them meeting only a few times but the Samuel's course for David's life, David held on to the rest of his life. The benefit of prophetic authority in your life is not being their buddy. It's being as close to the instruction they give you for your life. You know for me it's my pastor and for me it's other people in my life who I've met maybe twice in my life who prayed and gave me specific instruction. 
and my goal is not to be their best friend my goal is not to go out with them for coffee my goal is to stay as close to the course they give for my life I remember a man who came to our church a very successful and a very famous man and he grew up believing that because he's so successful every church he's gonna go to pastor is gonna be his buddy and when I kind of sensed that I was like oh my goodness you're gonna be set up for a big failure in our church and he was so disappointed because every Sunday night he wanted to have a coffee with our pastor number one pastor wouldn't drink coffee and number two he won't drink it with you he's gonna drink it with the TV watching TV Joshua and not you and I remember he was frustrated he was talking to me because he wanted to be pastor's closest friend you don't become a friend to Samuel you have to be a friend to the course Samuel lays for your life if a pastor gets up and throws a vision and you don't take that vision for your life but you're over there slobbering him and you just want to be his friend listen you missed the whole point he's not your papa he's not your mama and he's not your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your friend he is your prophetic authority stay close to the course he sets for your life can somebody say amen, amen. number three I call him painful authority now painful authority don't, don't look at your husband right now and don't look at your pastor painful authority we all feel like every authority is painful this is not that every authority can be painful but painful authority are those who throw spears at you not correction not rebuke this is not when you know your parents ask you why you're not a morning prayer why you're sleeping all the time or why your tabs on the car are not changed why is your room so dirty you know why are you 27 and you know you keep getting collection letters why are these this is not painful authorities these are those people in David's life like King Saul where he sits there holds a spear and does the spear throwing at David throws a spear right at David and then he chooses a manhunt to kill David for no reason he fabricates stories we all in life will come across an authority which might be painful now there's very powerful key here what David did and I'm going to give you a secret of how to deal with painful authority from the life of David one move your head number two don't throw the spear back otherwise if you don't move your head what does it move your head means any accusation you get from the authority that wants to destroy you is not personal you're not the problem they are they are hurting they are under demonic oppression or maybe they're going through something very difficult and you happen to be close enough for them to spank you you are not the problem as long as you deal with painful authority and see that you are the problem you're not gonna move your head you're gonna let whatever they say hit you and once it hits you you're gonna hit him back the best way to do is to do a check as painful as it hurts move your head means recognize tell yourself I'm not the problem they are now when you are the problem actually when there is actually reasons then you cannot use that but we're talking about when you're not the problem at all this person had a bad day came vomited things at you if you take it personally you don't move your head you will be tempted to throw the spear back which what will do is it will duplicate their problem inside of you the very thing you hate you become kids who say I hate my dad because he drinks he always comes drunk he never gives money to us and everything that hate because you're taking it personally it turns into bitterness and resentment and guess what happens with that child they either become an alcoholic or become harsh in other way you become like Saul we need painful authority make sure that we don't become painful authority God allows painful authority to give you an insurance and guarantee that you and I are not become like that authority to someone else. Amen.